we're, we're coming in to the city of St. Paul from the east and we take the Kellogg Boulevard exit. We take the Kellogg Boulevard exit and it, it's a really straight shot and there's the, can you see the St. Paul skyline? Yep. Okay, and we're gonna turn left onto Kellogg Boulevard. This is a very straight shot to get here to a lot of the um, key things in St. Paul. Over to the right there, you can see the state capitol. And then straight ahead of us on our left, this is the Mississippi River down here. And you go across this bridge and you might be able to see down on the left there are railroad tracks and this is where Amtrak comes in um, and it would be the Empire Builder which goes from Chicago to Seattle. The station is actually that. Yes. Up there I think. Not the crane. Yes, the crane is the station. The you have to climb up there <laughs> and seems, jump onto the this train. This looks like more parking under here. Yeah, I think the station is actually up there in the train. Yeah, it says Union Depot right there. Okay, so guys, look for hotels that are within walking distance. That was a cool shot. Cities look so cool on camera. Yeah. Uh, oh look, there's Twin Cities PBS headquarters. So again, here's the sign that says Union Depot, so you can actually walk right up there. And the Mississippi River is down yonder, and the railroad track is right there. Um, oh, here's a Hyatt place. Oh, that's right across the street. That'd probably be the closest. I think that's the intercom. Yeah, it is. So that's right there, Intercontinental. So that's the next closest hotel. That's pretty far. That was what, like three blocks? Yeah. I would not want to haul suitcases that far. No. So yeah, I'd say that Hyatt, that Hyatt place is definitely your closest hotel to the Minneapolis St. Paul Amtrak station. So coming up here on the um, left, yep, right up ahead, that is the Science Museum, and that is where we are going today, and uh, if people would let me get over, that is the Science Museum, and over to the right here at the next intersection, um, if you turn, okay, and I'm going to do something terrifying. If you go down that way, you'll get to the Ordway Theater, and that is River Center, and I'm going to show this in a minute, okay? Doing something terrifying. Oh, Hold boy. your horses, folks. Oh, 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 whoa, what is this? Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, boy. That is very narrow. It's very narrow and very steep, and a lot of people miss this. Holy buckets. There is another way to get into this parking ramp but this is the closest from where the direction I was coming from. Now, if you can see here, if you can look through the fence, this museum is built on a cliff overlooking the Mississippi River. And this is a very unique parking ramp because it's built like into the cliff. Yeah, that's a tight curve. <laughs> okay. We are, oh, I'm supposed to scan my member card, but I need my, um, <gasps> free parking this February. Oh, it's not February anymore. Dang. Get me. Okay, um, when you're a member of the Science Museum of Minnesota, you get a couple of benefits. First of all, you get free admission all the time. You get one free Omni film per visit. Um, and then you get five dollar parking but as you see here it said that we get um free parking in february but it is march, but it's march first now, so i don't know if we're still getting it or not but at the most we'll ever pay is five dollars this is very handy if we want to go to something near the museum like uh, over at the Excel Energy Center, which is across the street, or River Center, which is across the street. We can park here with our science 
museum member rate for only five bucks even and just walk over there um, the other really good benefit to um, the membership is that you get into hundreds of other science museums around the country and the world for free so um, we have definitely taken advantage of that and um, it's a it's a really good benefit you cannot use it within 90 miles I think of your home museum so as long as you're going to a museum that's more than 90 miles from your home museum which this is ours um, you get in free at a whole bunch of other museums so show the parking ramp one more time Maggie so um, we're gonna park and then you actually go upstairs to get in Behold and I, the stairs yep it's it's weird the museum is kind of like upside down the lobby is at the top and the exhibits are all you can see the cliff yeah there's the cliff where the parking ramp is built into wasn't there an incident where they found like tunnels yeah they did they found like old tunnels in there they had to close it for a while so they could investigate it was like old like rum runner tunnels or something yeah. i don't know it was something weird okay so here's our car and it's really if you it's just to here <laughs> we took our jackets off it's what how many degrees Meg? 48 48 degrees today and so each parking ramp level has so we're on green so easy to remember green march and I'm wearing a green shirt and then you just go here and I like this museum because it has this cool tile everywhere this, this is in the bathrooms too and so we're on the dinosaur level and see so it says you have to go up to get to the science museum go up now if you went down you just go to different parking levels Megan's here Ben's here. We must get in the elevator. We must get in the elevator. May I press the button? Megan's gonna press the button. Which button? Lobby. Um, lobby. So see, the lobby's on the top. It's kind of unique. It has an L. You have a dinosaur level, a duck level, a we bear. We are the dinosaurs. A fish. That's what we're saying. Oh. oh yeah, and we're going to this special exhibit today. Okay, so you come out. And you're on the main floor. Now, I'm not going to make the kids do this, but I'm going to go outside for a second and show you. So this is actually the lobby over here. This is the front door of the museum if you came from the street. Oh, I guess I don't have to go outside. Over there, across the street, like down a little bit, where that neat cathedral building is, is Ordway. Um, and they have Broadway shows and musical theater and all sorts of stuff. That building is River Center, and we will probably be making a video there soon because we're going to go to the International, what's it called? Folk Festival, the, what's it called? I can't think of it. Anyway, and then over there to the left, connected to the River Center inside, is the Excel Energy Center, which is St. Paul's main big arena with like hockey and major sporting events when a big um, concert comes to town, you know, Selena Gomez or whoever, it's gonna be in that. Okay, so, no guns. Breastfeeding, welcome. So you come in here, restrooms and lockers, the store, the ticket booth, and so you go into the exhibits and then you actually go down to go to the exhibits. The Omni Theater though is on this main level. There's a little cafe right there. Over here is the Mississippi River Visitor Center. And I'm just gonna walk you through here, but I'm not gonna talk.
do you compare Ben? Ooh, Ben is almost as big as a bald eagle. We had to flop the ropes, the battle ropes. When did you do this? In gym? Oh. So this is just all educational stuff about the Mississippi River, which is... Um, is this St. Paul? Or is that... No, that's Minneapolis. So we're down... We're that way. Because it would be right. Like, yeah, I think we're right along there somewhere. Like we. Right yeah, I think you're very close, actually. And it's just all educational stuff about the Mississippi River, which is right outside. And you can get. If you take a Mississippi River cruise, they leave from here. Um. American Steamboat Company, I'd have to look that up. Okay. Going back out, guys. Okay, we're gonna go pick up our tickets. Okay, so after you get your tickets, you get a wristband. And then um, I just wanted to show you this. There's a big map of the world on the floor, which is pretty cool. And then over here, there are restrooms and lockers there's an ATM and you use this little kiosk to get your locker rental there are vending machines over here um, and a oh it's just a courtesy phone it's not actually a pay phone so there's water and power stuff and snacks there's a change machine and then here is the lockers and there's drinking fountains and then the restrooms are back there and we have our big dinosaur in the lobby and I'm just gonna walk you through there's some um, tourism museum and tourism information over here you can get a map here if you want we've been here so many times that we don't need it anymore um, the summer camp brochure did come out um, recently we got it in the mail because we're members my kids have come to many summer camps here there's a wide variety of offerings for um, ages preschool through high school um, so if you're interested in that they do fill up pretty fast um, they're kind of expensive but you get a discount if you're a member This is stuff based on the current space exhibit. It's a really nice store. It's pretty big. Everything in here is like educational and science related. Lots of books. Puzzles. Really nice um, place to come like if you're looking for like a unique gift. They have some really nice stuff in here. Fun socks, <laughs> scarves. I mean, there's like really pretty jewelry and stuff. And then you can come out this back door of the store, and over here um, is a polar bear. That's a real polar bear, it's taxidermied and a polar bear cub. There's some more lockers. And then these are the elevators to get to other levels of the museum, but you cannot get to the exhibits through here. 
the only way you can get into the exhibits is through that door and then you have to use the inside elevators that are like around the back of these to get from level to level in the exhibits and there's also stairs and the entrance to the Omni Theater is right there we're gonna be seeing two Omni films today and we'll tell you about those after we see them from this whole side of the museum you can you get a nice view of the Mississippi River which is right down there and in the summer you will see boats going up and down there's a park right across the street and this is the railroad track that we were talking about right down there okay so we just came into the exhibits and the top level there's this little news broadcast thing there's um, vaccinations there's a thing about the Mississippi River there's the giant astronaut and you can put your face in his face you do it over here it's quite busy today this is cool it see the kid is turning it and it flips changes the scene to show how the Mississippi River has changed over time this whole top thing is all Mississippi River stuff. Um, trying to not get people. And again, the back side of the museum here, all everything faces the river, so you um, you always get these nice views of the Mississippi, which is really nice. And there is a tugboat out here on the roof, basically. <laughs> and you can go in the tugboat and go up. You can see the people up there. And this is um, collections. You can actually trade with them for stuff that you find in nature. This is where you go in the... Oh, they're calling it a towboat. This is where you go in the towboat. Back to the astronaut, and Megan's face is on the astronaut. Did you get it? <laughs> ben, are you gonna put your face on the astronaut? There's my face on the giant astronaut. Look at your tag, it says Heather. Oh, it says Heather on my tag? Oh. It stopped. Ben wants to go in the towboat. So we're going in, it's a little bit of a line, so this is the bottom of it. There's a little patio out there, but I've never seen anyone out there. Maybe it's a summer thing. It's a narrow little staircase. It's really bright under here. It's very bright. Here, do you just want to peek out? Yeah. Okay. So there's the museum, and up there's a patio where you can go out and eat in the summertime because that's a restaurant up there. Mm -hmm. And here, just go over. That's a really nice view. That's very nice. You want to sit in the wheel, bud? Okay. Okay, I hear it. No, let me get a picture. It is hot. Okay, so to get from one level to the other, you can either take the elevators that are back there, or you can take the stairs. That area that you see through the windows there is the waiting area for the Omni Theater. And here's the stairs. There are two more levels below this, so there's actually three total levels of exhibits.
Should we do the NASA one? Yeah. And get that done? There are hand sanitizing stations throughout the museums near the interactive exhibits where you would be touching stuff. Okay, when you leave this part of the museum, you go out here on this little walkway and there's these cool cabaret mechanical theater. And we love these. Oh, throughout the museum, they do have these um, recycling, trash, sorting stations. On the lower level from here is a, a smaller cafe. The big cafe is up on the top level. This is a smaller cafe, but this is the only one you can get to inside the exhibit space. So these little automatons Meg, can you demonstrate one? I don't want to be the kitty anymore. Okay, then pick one that's not mean. That one's the most interesting. This one here? Yeah. Oh, that is pretty cool. Wait. Ah, his head! What's in his head? A fish. There's a fish in a tiger's head. The voice that you're hearing, the man's voice that you're hearing is directly below me. It's the science live theater where they do live demonstrations of different science concepts. We have watched those in the past. Some of them are very interesting and very good and entertaining and some of them are a little bit of a snooze. So you kind of just got to pick and choose. <laughs> and there's a schedule every day of when they have the science live theater. I'll show you where it is when we get down there. Okay. Does the mummy guy do anything? Just like yeah, he takes his face off. Oh, this guy does. But there's just like this little let go many figure in there just for kicks? Yep. Okay. I That's know. weird. It's showing age. Ah. Did you see? A healthy bug? A dead bug. A mummified bug. And then over here, um, there is a the human body gallery. This is different too. This used to be totally different than this. You used to have to go through and the, you could do like science experiments in here and stuff. They've changed a lot of things and I have to say, here's the giant astronaut. I have to say I am not very happy with some of the changes. I feel like they've made it less interactive and kind of dull. <laughs> um, it used to be more interesting. Wow, they're blind. Oh my gosh. Whoa. What's that? Oh, the newborn? Ooh, they have human body slices. Ooh, there's a brain, a real one. Fat. Look, a real brain. That's real? Yeah. That's real. Here's a real heart. Is that a real one? Yes. And here are the human body slices. Children have bodies too. Infestation. I do not want to see that. Yeah, let's not. Okay, this lab theater, the last exhibit that they had in here was really good. Remember it was like illusions? Like how sight and stuff could like trick your eyes. It was really neat, but I do not want to see something called infestation.
That sounds terrifying. This is all stuff about the earth. There's blood pumping above my head. I'm sure it's not real blood. And then this stuff in the center is... I don't know what this is. It's like, what is this exhibit about? The Quackery Museum. So, like, phony science. Oh. So, this is the Quackery Museum. It's all. I don't know. Oh, it's. It's all junk science. It's not real. Yeah. Okay. What is it supposed to do for you? It squeezes all the tree constipation. <laughs> well, that'll, yeah. One time there was a thing that said, put your hand here, and if you can clear your mind, you won't get shocked. And I got shocked, and Andrew did it. Really? Yep. So Andrew can clear his mind? Okay, let's go downstairs. Okay, now we're going down to the bottom level. There are more dinosaurs down here. And that Science Live Theater that I was telling you about is right here. The stage is under me, and that's where you sit and watch it. And there's the cafe and the dinosaurs. And then over here, there's an exhibit called Sportsology. And there's an exhibit on light. Oh, you have to catch it. Okay. So, it's your reflexes? Okay. Does it hurt when you grab it? So here's the view of the Science Live theater from the front. Okay, these are the controls to control the waves over there. Ducky. There is a there is a duck in there behind this man. There's the duck. And then you can adjust the waves at the control station here. And there's the Science Live Theater presentation behind them. Okay, Ben and I came out of the second Omni film a little early because Ben got a little dizzy. And we came out here and this little seating area is really nice here and this was not here before. I think we just went down. Well, they, but they've remodeled it since the last time we were here and there's restrooms over that way. Well, the women's is there and the men's is there. And then and the Omni Theater's back that way. And when, then when you go out here, um, we're waiting for Megan. It's almost done. There's a food court. It's closed right now, but this is a very nice food court. We're now at the top level of the museum, and I will... There's like four stations, I think, where you can get food there. And, um, and then there's like a big seating area, and then there's a big patio where you can sit out there too, and I'll show you that here in a minute, but we're going to let the crowd go by first because the movie's about to end. Okay, so you come out and... Here's the little food court. There's like stations and then you come out here and see like normally this gate would be open. But the museum is closing in like an hour. 
And see here, it's, I'm just gonna walk over to the windows, guys. Here's this big seating area, and there you can, that, you can, those tables overlook the lobby where we came in. And there's lots of seating, and we've had lunch here many times. And then, out here there's a patio, and in good weather, you can sit out there and eat. And there's even one of those binocular things, and there's the Mississippi. And that's it, and we're gonna head back to the car now. That's the Science Museum of Minnesota. One last thing I have to show you. These stairs are musical. When you go down the stairs, there's little sensors. Oh, I don't think this one's working. Is it? Yeah. It can't keep up. You go past these little sensors and it makes music. <laughs> and then when you get back down here, you're back in the main lobby. Hi. All right, so we're back in the car and we're still in the parking ramp at the Science Museum of Minnesota. We just wanted to give you a quick review of the two Omni Theater films that we saw. Um, you get one free with your membership every visit, and then you get a discount on any additional Omni films that you see. We um, had a six dollar discount on the second one. Oh, cool! And um, if you are coming though to the museum, you can just buy admission to the Omni films separately, you don't have to go into the museum. Okay, so the first one we saw was Apollo 11. And this one coincides with the special exhibit they have right now, which I'm making a separate video about. So that will be the next video I post after this one, so watch for that. I really enjoyed that Omni film. Megan was a little bit lost. I'm pretty sure I just wasn't paying attention half the time. <laughs> did you see, recently when we watched Apollo 13, did you watch that with us or was just did just That kind was of, just you two. Yeah, um, Ben has been studying this year in school. He's been studying space in science class. I'm just not as into the whole space thing in general. The thing that impressed Ben and I about that film, it was not a typical Omni film. Like It wasn't like, it wasn't narrated. Yeah. Um, it was just straight footage, um, actual footage from the Apollo 11 Landing, landing and, and process. Yeah, the whole thing. And it was very good footage. Ben actually whispered to me and said, this is really good footage for from 1969. Yeah, because, um, like, I've seen stuff of President Kennedy, and there's even, um, I mean, there was stuff of President Kennedy in there, and it's all, like, grainy, and the sound is poor, but... Um, this was really it, good. It was, like, high tech. The color was really good. The sound was really good. Um... And it just showed the whole process from the prep, like the day before they, the launched, day before they launched until the until day they, they came landed. back. And it was, you know, just them talking, the people at Mission Control talking, the astronauts talking, showing the launch, showing um, their, their, um, like their TV shoots from space. Yeah. Um, and it was very, very good. I just, I thought it was fascinating and interesting when it, when it ended everybody in the theater clapped and well did you see when the people on the screen clapped there was this little boy way in front of us who was like yeah it was going it was it. quite emotional and moving and cool and so that was the first one we saw and then we were allowed to just stay in there but we moved over at, in the first film the first film was fuller than the second yeah. film when you say for people and we um were over way to the side and that was kind of a funny angle because the screen kind of comes up and over you. Yeah. And um, you kind of have to look like this the whole time to see everything. Some films it's worse than others. But yeah. But we, um, we were allowed to stay in there. And so when most of the people left, we moved over right into the center seats. The second film that we saw was called Super Power Dogs. 
and I just loved it. It was really cute. I actually teared up a few times because I love dogs. But it was um, it was um, narrated by Chris Evans, who plays Captain America in the Avengers Avengers movies, movies. and um, he was supposedly doing the voice of this one uh, dog named ski rescue Henry. dog named Henry, and um, it focused on dogs that have special jobs yeah. basically um there were these ski rescue dogs that find people in avalanches there were um bloodhounds in africa that protect um elephants and they find um, they find poachers. poachers and there were um there was a rescue dog it focused on this one rescue dog in training called named halo halo and she was a dutch shepherd yep and um that was like a search and rescue dog, like looking for people in like disasters. Yeah. And then there was Reef. The surf dog. Yeah. Reef. Yeah, that helped people with um like anxiety and disabilities and PTSD. Oh no. Reef oh. was the flushy dog or the one who <gasps> the fluffy! It yeah. was a Newfoundland in <laughs> Italy that helped rescue he people. Was the Coast Guard. Yeah, and it was like Ricochet was the surf dog. Ricochet was the surf dog. Reef was this big fluffy Newfoundland in Italy that there were all these dogs that did um, they worked with the Coast Guard to like rescue people at sea and then um, Ricochet was the surf dog surf dog that actually surfed it was pretty cool so um, yeah Ben and I stepped out a few minutes before the end of the movie because the one thing about Omni films is some of the motion scenes I even got yeah, dizzy a few actually, times like, they actually make you, make you sick, sick. And I have to shut my eyes every once in a while. I had to do it a couple times during the Apollo 11 one and a couple times during the dog one. And Ben just started to get really dizzy. And so he and I went out and waited on that bench that I showed you. Because it, it moves a lot. Like, it's camera footage that goes all over and, like... Yeah, it's like it, it's like you're moving. Yeah, it's like you're part of the yeah, thing. Yeah, so... But obviously, you're not moving. I really like the Omni films. Some, I mean, some of them are really, really good. And... Um, some of them it's like, you know, Yeah. but, um, I, I was saying to Megan, I, we were debating about whether to do them with a break in the middle or to do them back to back. And we ended up doing them back to back. And at first I said, I think I liked it, but now I think maybe that might've been yeah, too, too much. much because that's almost two hours of watching a film like that. And you do get a little bit queasy <laughs> so yeah but um if you ever get a chance to check out most science museums many science museums have some type of omni film and they're they're all science or exploratory yeah. related to something like that and they usually will be in some way related to some exhibit that they're having at the museum at the time so it's kind of nice because you can go see this special exhibit right. and, then and then watch, watch the, the film, film that goes it. with it. So, yeah, so be sure to um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you get a notification when I put out the video about the special Apollo 11 exhibit that we saw today. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you next time. Safe travels. Safe travels.